Hey, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. Well, you can see what's over my shoulder here. 2011 Cadillac SRX. You want to guess what's wrong with it? Well, timing chains again. I did this car three years ago. And I did a video on it. Uh, kind of a quick video. At the time, there weren't many videos on doing timing chains on one of these engines. This is the 2.8 liter um, Saab engine that's in this. It's a turbocharged engine. Uh, the other engine that was available on this 2011 and also 2010 were the 3 liter. But they did offer a turbocharged 2.8 liter. And that's what this one is. And it was made by Saab. And uh, I think at 100... 60,000 kilometers we did the uh, timing chains that like three years ago and now we have just under 200,000 on it uh, and they're gone again now in saying the timing chains are gone again I used closed timing chains the last time and in saying that the timing chains are gone is probably not an accurate uh, description of what's actually happening here so what I'm going to show you is what happened. What I found is what's wrong with it. But this video is about uh, something a little bit different because I'm not doing a video on timing chains. There's, since I did the video on this one, there's probably a hundred more out there now that came up since I did mine. And, and far better than what I did for videos. They're really detailed on how to, how to do these engines. These are, just so you know, if you own one of these cars and you have to do it, it's not an easy job. It can be done, like I say, like we, I did it myself, I'm doing it again now, but it's not an easy job. The timing chain uh, installation part of it is quite simple. Uh, and there's great, like I said, there's great videos out there people put out for the stuff. But it's the ability to work on this engine is what the problem is in this configuration with the engine, uh, you know, opposed engine. Now, the inline ones, like on the Camaros, Anything that has the, the 3 liter or the 3.6 is the same deal and the 2.8. But like say the Camaro with a 3.6, if the engine is in line, uh, front to back, uh, you got lots of room to work. But on these opposed ones, like uh, side, side to side, holy man. Anyway, uh, what this video is actually about is not about the timing chains. As I said I'm not doing one about timing chains. Is when I went, oh... I should also fill you in that uh, I had some uh, rocker noise in this on the rear back here on the uh, on the rear bank front uh, of the engine at the rear bank, which would be the uh, right right side. Yes, so it's the right side. If it were forward on and you're sitting in the driver's seat, it's the right side. So it's the rear bank is the right side for this engine. So I had some rockers uh, that were bad. I put eight new ones in them. Uh, there were at least three that I found were scratchy on the roller. So I just replaced them there and expensive. I bought all GM ones. Uh, all the parts I'm putting in here are GM parts. They're uh, GM chains, GM tensioners. Um, the uh, oil pump is a melting oil, oil pump. Now I didn't replace the oil pump the last time I did this. I just did the, I just used the GM one, but I'm going to do the oil pump as well this time. And it's a melling. So I bought a melling one, but let me show you what was wrong with this engine. So just give me a second and I'll get you down out of here and I'll show you what actually happened. And it wasn't the chains. All right. So what took place? Okay. Well, I can show you right there if anybody wants to guess. So this is the oil pump for this engine. Crankshaft was in here. And there's a bossing on the oil pump to uh, turn it. But there, what happens is, what happened to this one, is that there's a, uh, a uh, shoe. I call it a shoe, but it's actually a guide. Uh, it's a nylon guard, guide that goes over top of this uh, plate that's right here. And uh, you can see the remnants, that little yellow part right there, that's the remnants of the old uh, guide but you can also see where the chain was dragging across it because you could hear when you rev the engine up and let off it, you hear like a rattling sound. Uh, so the lower chain on this engine, the, the, it goes like in a triangle around the idlers and around the, the sprocket that's on the, on the crank. Well, the, the, uh, the tensioner didn't have enough range to take up for it with this guide, with this guide missing. So, 
automatically you're starting getting codes because everything's out of time now. So that's it. So that what was caused, causing that uh, rattling sound, uh, plus the lifters were had a ticking, not lifters, but it was actually the rocker arms. It wasn't the lifters. The lifters are good and tight, but the rocker arms were uh, wearing the, the, the needles in the actual um, rocker arms were grindy sounding. So they were causing some problems there. Well, there it is. That's what was wrong with it. Uh, that uh, guide on the oil pump was worn out. Now the new oil pump, the Melling pump has one on it. So I didn't have to buy a new guide. It came with the oil pump. I'll be reusing all the old guides. They're all in good shape. The, I, did, I am going new chains. Like I said, it's all GM chains, GM rockers. Everything was all new. But what happened was uh, when I put the rockers in, I had to take the camshafts off on the rear bank or the right bank rather. And I was tensioning them up, uh, uh, torquing them back on. So during the torquing process, I was getting, I broke off one bolt in the, in this bearing cap right back here, right there. If I can get this clearer or not. Yeah, a little bit clearer. Anyway, so these bolts right here. And I had them marked, so I, they go in like this. So the rear bolt on that bearing cap broke off. Now, these bolts, I did a little investigating on them. These are only grade five bolts. They should have been able to stand what the recommended torque for them. And actually, I think I'm torquing them a couple newtons a little bit uh, under, but I, I didn't want to push my luck. It's hard to find clear direction on, on this actual process for this engine. I couldn't find it. Maybe others can. It doesn't matter now. It's going in. I've torqued all the rest of them. These will have to be retorqued again, but uh, the back ones are already done. But I'm terrified now to do any of it. <laughs> but anyway, so the, what this video is about, getting around to what it's actually about, is getting that bolt out. So we have this bolt in this hole here. The remainder of the bolt is down in the head. So normally in an old rusty bolt, you know what you're dealing with. You can get in on it usually on the head and you can weld a bit on it and, and take it out. Now this bolt here, I turned it in by hand with my fingers before I torqued it. So it's not in there by much, but it's down in a, in a, in a sort of a little, like a bit of a galley, like a journal. It's down inside a bit. So you can't really get at it easily to weld anything on. Now I, I could if I absolutely have to, but um, put my thinking cap on. I said, well, why don't I get a set of uh, left-hand thread drill bits? So that's what I did. So this is what I'm going to try to do. First, I'm going to try to get it out with a left-hand thread drill bit because I know the bolt's not rusted in. I know it was, had, it was lubricated when it went in because it was, I had to blow the oil out of it to look for it. So I know it's not in there by much but I couldn't get it turning with a screwdriver or anything like that. And I don't want to start just drilling willy nilly on it. So let me get set up and see if I can get it to back out with this. Uh, worst case scenario, I'm going to have to go down the road of uh, welding some kind of a sleeve, metal sleeve onto it. Now welding in there is going to be very tight. I'll have to protect the camshaft. There's a lot that has to be happening there. So I'd rather do it with this left thread, left hand thread, or left hand drill bit first. We'll see. But I, I know I could probably get it if I, if I have to welding, but it's going to be very tight. Uh, it'll be pretty precision. But one thing about it, the weld won't stick to the aluminum. It'll only stick to the steel bolt. So, all right, well, let's get set up and see what we can do with these left uh, hand drill bit. So I've got my drill bit. The left hand thread drill bit, I should show you what one looks like in case you've never seen them. So they're the same, they're the same as a uh, uh, right hand bit, except the actual, the fluting of the spiraling is the opposite way. So it turns this way instead of this way. And they're readily available. I didn't have a set, but I do now for this job only, but whatever. Uh, so. What I did, I got one that was a little bit undersized for the hole and I put some black tape on it because I don't want to cut with the sides of the drill bit into the aluminum. This is just soft aluminum. So anyway, uh, this is experimental. Let's see what we can do with it. Hopefully this will bring it out. I'm not looking to drill this deeper. I'm just trying to get the, the uh, old bolt out. So let's see what happens. Oh. 
not going to do anything if it slips on the bit. Clearly, it's bit into something. There you go, just like clockwork. Dead battery. <laughs> All right, hold on. Get right, I'll get another battery. Okay, I'm back. Man, 60, what am I, 61 now. It's getting harder to climb up in this stuff. Anyway, have to give this up someday soon. All right, another battery. Hopefully it's got some charge in it. Let's see if we can do this again. Aha! He's coming out. Look at that. Ha. Oh, that's that saved my skin, man. Whew. It caught a little bit of the aluminum, but I had to drill into the bit a tiny bit. Now, where'd my little wrench go? Holy. I was pretty worried about that. Let's see what we got. It felt like it was coming out. I bunged the finger up, taking an injector out of the uh, cabriolet. That was about two months ago. <laughs> Still not. I thought the nail would fall right off, but here it is. All right. Whoa. Oh, what the, what's going on in there? Now maybe I can get it out. This way now. There it is, look. Oh, what a lifesaver. Wow. Oh my, you don't know how happy I am right now. Whew. <laughs> well, yeah, that makes me, <laughs> like you guys don't even know how much better I feel right now getting that out on the first crack. I was like, oh. And uh, you know, I'm pretty confident I could get it welding, like I said, but the next step would be pulling the head off, taking it into it, get a shop to take it out and redrill a new hole. Probably put some uh, Healy coil in it or something. I could probably do that myself, but it's probably still have to pull the head off to do a good boring job. I don't know. I, would have, I don't even really want to think about what would need to be done if I couldn't get it out uh, this way. Anyway, I'm rambling on. I'm just happy I don't have to continue on showing you how to get that bolt out in another manner. The left hand drill bits are your way if you know it's not rusted in. If it's rusted in, you're probably going to end up welding something on. But anyway, everyone, uh, thanks a lot. And I hope this helps someone that's in this pickle because that is a bit of a pickle. That's not uh, you know, you walk up and it's not a, it's not a brake caliper bolt or anything like that. That's a pretty serious part. And you, you've got to do it right now because you can't just put the engine back together half-assed. It has to be done right. Anyway, let's uh, call her there. Uh, thank you everyone for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.